Jeremy is a narcissistic asshole. Well, the other people don't matter. My opinion matters. He's not gonna support your product because he feels that you're a piece of shit. Yeah, fine for you. This guy has lost his mind. This is a strict lie and I would sue that idiot that says things like that. He also steals content. <laughs> so Jeremy, a lot of these questions, they're personal ones that I have as well. When I see what you've done at, you know, with, with Fragrance One <laughs> and, you know, with dates and office, you know, I'm proud of you. Yes. I think it's amazing that you have, uh, you've been able to get this out. But as you know, there's a lot of people that that don't, I mean, they're upset. They're frustrated. Why? Let's make a very simple black and white questionnaire. Why are people upset? Because the fragrances are too expensive? So that's the first one, is that a lot of people <laughs> okay. say, and let's just take your latest one, date. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, a lot of people felt office was expensive at 179, yeah. but they're like, okay, I get it. He brought in, you know, Alberto. Alberto Morias, the Spanish super yep. perfumer. And, and, and this guy, you know, it's like, okay, I can see this. He's going for high end. And then it was like, when you came out with date and we're talking at the 250 price point, Point, people are just like, this guy has lost his mind. How can he come out with a fragrance that expensive? Why do people, first of all, ask me and not a brand like a Clive Christian, which sells for $850, a brand like Creed that sells for $480? Are these people better human beings than me? Do these people use better perfumers than me? Am I not allowed to price a fragrance at that price? I feel the brand gets more attention because of that. I honestly, well, if you price a fragrance that high, it gets a lot of attention easily. There's also a bit of a placebo effect attached to it because we do wear a label that says something and everybody knows, well, this is a $10,000 handbag. This is a $50,000 watch. You buy it because of also the reason that you know it's expensive and you your self-worth, as crazy as it is, and I'm pretty disciplined myself and not gaining too much into materialism, I also feel a bit better when I have an expensive product versus a cheap product. But still, let's go very much to the back what I've just mentioned. If I price this fragrance at $50 and I'm, I would sell much more, okay, I would make much more greedy money if I would sell for $50. Yet I'm not doing it, so all the haters could be happy that I'm so stupid that I'm not doing it. All right, <laughs> that's my response to that. Okay, you know, they can see, let's go back to the Creed in, yeah, you know, comparison. Sure. So what they see with Creed is that he has pedigree, that he's been around a lot longer, that it's an established brand that has earned the right, whether, you know, whether okay. or not this, this logic of thought may be correct, sure. but they've earned the right to price at that point. Sure. You have and not earned the right. That, that's why am I one, one argument. So I'm at least the leading fragrance influencer. Isn't that cool? Isn't that a special thing? Am I not allowed to have a certain type of story and price the fragrance because of that, that highs because I'm the leading fragrance influencer? And there have been other fragrance influencers like Kerosene, he or whoever, I think also Stephen Rader Lessons, they also price it for, I think, 195 yep. pounds or other guys. But obviously, since I'm the leading influencer, I get a lot of punches in the face, but that's fine. It's actually giving me attention. But if you really go back into it, there's no, it's a, an emotional thing. We're talking about a luxury product. This is not a commodity like bread and water. These are luxury goods and you're buying a certain lifestyle and people believe in me and I'm not making the biggest numbers, but I myself feel this brand is worth even much more. And I priced it actually even higher than this. And people have bought it also for a higher price than they are not doing now. But the threshold on the purchases then was so little that I said, man, people are currently not ready to pay, let's say, $249 for actually euros, I think, for Office for Man, which I had it once. So I'm just experimenting a lot. I'm not okay. afraid of stuff. And if you check out the market of fragrances, especially in the niche world, what type of credibility do these people have? Because somebody grew up in, in Nice on South France and her grandmother liked the smell of lavender and she wants to honor her grandmother's passion for lavender and that's why she makes the 
Côte d'Azur fragrances, $295 per bottle. Nobody cares about it because it has now attention. So I understand the system. Yeah. I got the attention so people want to attack me. But there's no attack needed, guys. This is really just easy going, luxury goods. I'm not making super much out of it, but I do believe this brand is much worth so much. If you want me to price this at $50 per bottle and I would make 20 times more money, see, I'm the stupid guy that's not making that. So haters should be happy about that. Let's talk about the bottle or the packaging. Yeah. And you know, from the bottle to the packaging itself. A lot of people yeah. out there, they expect a fragrance at this price point to be in a yeah. much better bottle in, you know, I had somebody, you know, make a good point about the lid. This thing is razor thin. You yeah. can cut yourself. Uh, yeah. In fact, I've got, you know, your first one here. I thought the bottle was a lot nicer than currently yeah. the bottle you're going with. You've gone with the same bottle for both office and date. And, you yeah. know, the packaging, the presentation, Correct. it just seems really plain Jane. Yeah, it's very plain. German style. What you see is what you get. You get the office fragrance. You get the date fragrance. And the production costs of a fragrance, whether you take the big names, and now I'm obviously, I know a little bit about law and legal stuff, so I'm not naming particular brands, but the production costs of a fragrance, doesn't matter which one you're talking about. They won't, they sometimes go for $5 per bottle, even the ones that sell for $350 per bottle. Do you think if you would have gone with a nicer bottle that you would have gotten a little bit less hate? No, 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 I would always get hate. I knew I would always get hate. If I would have a magnetic cap, people would say, man, you're copying this. You always find hate and that's fine. And that's so fine. You're giving me attention, but I have nothing to hide. In fact, well, again, guys, the production costs of a fragrance are very cheap. Doesn't matter how nice the, this is. Doesn't matter how this is. They are always cheap. Just like a Picasso painting, technically is also cheap in production costs, but you're buying the luxury, the production, the emotions behind it. So are, are you coming out with a club? Because a lot of people, I, I read people saying that this should have actually been club for men because they feel uh, the, the way yeah. that the juice is put together, just FYI. <laughs> I wanted to make it, this was in fact first as the club for men, but the DNA was not loud enough and not projecting enough. And you know what I don't get, man? I'm an internet person. Wouldn't it be nicer if all the internet people from the community would rather support me? Because this is something new. This, this concept is relatively new. I'm not saying that work hard, play hard, this general concept is new. But wouldn't it be cooler to support me instead of being like against me? Because there are multi-billion dollar companies, I'm telling you, multi-billion dollar companies that can crash me if they want with this that can literally crash me even if I didn't have done anything I thought from a human perspective it would be kind to the people where I grew up here on the internet it would be nice actually to have some support from them and finally Antonio some of the guys that are now growing on YouTube as well having their own Instagram groups and whatever they have they are exposed to hate as well and they suddenly say Jeremy Man, now I got hate myself too. Yeah, man, once you get big, people start hating on you. Yeah. Well, but this should, this, this is actually a terrible thing on human nature and I don't get it pretty much. Well, let's, let's, but, let's double down well, on hate because yeah. I've got some quotes I want to share with you. And again, sure. this is taken right off of Fragrantica <laughs> so people can let's go check it. this out. There, and there are lots of them. <laughs> Let me see. There is nothing inherently right about living your dream. When your dream yeah. is to basically defraud young, impressionable men who only want to fit in with the alphas and get late, convincing them that your pedestrian juice will somehow make all their dreams come true. How do I say that, that my juice makes other people's dream true? This is a strict lie and I would sue that idiot that says things like that. This is a straight up lie. I'm not saying my juice makes other people make their dreams come true. I hope I well, didn't they're say saying that. They're saying least. that it's impressionable men <laughs> you know? who want to fit in and get laid. You're basically making a promise that this juice okay. is going to deliver. Give me quotes what I'm exactly saying, then I can defend myself or say, well, that was a stupid yeah. statement. But I definitely can sign right now that my fragrance will make men more attractive. Definitely one. And it will save their time. You know, my brother, my brother Camille, he said, Actually, this idea is pretty cool. It helps you to escape the jungle of fragrances. If you go into a department store, just like when I want to do, I want to buy some other stuff, 
I have no idea. Well, let's, let's stick with fragrances. You, there are a thousand fragrances in the store and you have no idea which one to pick. So you're looking for a credible source and not, not playing with that. These juices are actually really good. You know, I, I, I walk time. into a store and I only see, let's say, 40 to 50 fragrances and that's still way too many because yeah. I'm still trying to, to figure. So, so one more quote, Jeremy is a narcissistic asshole who's extremely egotistical, condescending. He tries to show it who dissed his followers. He also steals content and it gets worse with some silly fame stardom disease. Redolescence is on Jeremy's nuts. They cross promote huge negative points for redolescence. Basically, he's this guy's attacking you. He's basically saying that he's not going to support your product, not because of the product, because he feels that you're a piece of shit. All right. I, I'm just worrying. Do, does anybody ever say this to you in person? I'm just no, curious. No, just like when I had my Ferrari, Antonio. No person. I met about, let's say, 157 people in my real life when I owned the red, gorgeous Ferrari. Every person in the real life said, whoa, man, it's so sexy, this guy. I love that car, man. It's so gorgeous. Yet, however, in the real life, okay, I get it. Now, I don't engage in hate because mm. I'm talking to you right now, Antonio. I almost don't even get to call my mother once per day because I'm so busy. Why should I engage in one of 3,572 people per day? And from then, there are 25 that are negative. Let me, for the few times that I have, rather engage in, the, engage in the positivity and also talking with my mother, doing this stuff, doing this stuff. I think that's a much better approach than, than engaging in hate. No, I, because, I, I agree. Because attention is the number one thing that people look. This is, like, this is more important than money, than gold, than, than pretty much everything. Attention. Why should we give attention to negative people? Let's engage the good vibes, the good people, just like I don't want to support, let's say, plastic surgery, whatever, that's a different topic, but I do want to engage honest, positive people instead of fight negative people. So let's get to something that I think is actually, this is good constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Some yeah, people sure. are saying, you know what, hey, Jeremy, you're asking a lot for me to blind buy these fragrances. Yeah. How come you do not have it where I can at least buy a smaller sample to make sure that I actually like this stuff before I spend my money on it? Yeah, we're working on a 10 ml and we're starting and there are companies like Facebook or Mark Zuckerberg or Richard Branson. They say, man, just start ASAP and you learn within the process. People said, well, I can't smell it. Can I buy it? So the reaction was, okay, let's do 10 ml lower entry to the brand. So I'm also looking to improve myself or the company. That's how you learn, but you have to go forward, man. And in the way you go, you just learn. So the 10 MLs are coming in two months. So I think February, 2020. And I know that a lot of people actually in various groups, they're, they're buying, let's say you were having a deal, they grab, you know, the deal with date and they're basically splitting it up. Uh, do yeah. you have anything, are, are, do you encourage that? Do you think it's a good thing? Well, I thought about that because as you know, Antonio, there are companies that do that. They split and sell it. And I, I thought of doing that the same. And as you know, as the leading fragrance influencer, I have worked for the big, big companies. L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, LVMH. I have worked for them guys because there was no other fragrance influencer. They had to take me, okay? So I asked these sources, some of them, Pooch and all the good good guys. Hey man, is it actually possible to do that myself too? And back then they said, some of them, I'm not naming like who said what, but they said, no, it's not allowed because we can't guarantee you, you're just putting the juice in and who knows if you're filling a Creed Aventus clone for $25 and sell it as the actual Creed Aventus. And I also made a test. I think my brother wrote to the, some of these decant companies and they also couldn't actually give a real argument on, yes, this is the real juice. I think, I think, and I'm not naming a name right now, but one company is starting now to have the official permission from the brands that they can sell decants. But up till then, if you sell it on the eBay, until then, technically, I think these brands are obviously allowed to sue you because yeah. it's like, it's like selling a shoe but it's not the actual shoe or, or let's say you, you're selling olive oil 
This is the real olive oil from the superstar olive oil company that usually costs $100 per, per ounce. We are selling the same one, just decanted. How do you want to know it's the actual olive oil? Unless the actual olive oil company says yes, it's approved. So No, no, that, that makes perfect <laughs> I mean, sense. I can see where know, a company uh, wants to control their brand. Sure. Uh, so let me ask about date. A lot of people yeah. are out there saying that this is Ultramol or that this is just like Armani Code, Mont Blanc Legend, Invictus. Do you think those comparisons are fair? I have no idea if I'm allowed to make these type of statements naming other brands because man, if you make a brand and, and you get interviewed and tell you have a fashion brand or any yeah. other hater, let's say you got a fashion brand, you say this is a straight up copy from a Nike shoe. Isn't there a straight up copy from a Nike shoe that you're doing right now, Antonio? And you're saying, yeah, I'm a little bit inspired by a Nike shoe. So I have no idea if I get into legal issues or not. Yeah. My intention is never, never to clone a fragrance, never. And also we're talking, I didn't make the fragrance. Alberto Marias made the fragrance. He's a superstar. And I also think for ethical reasons, you should do your own stuff. Mm -hmm. But always you find similarities in, in stuff, just like in the music industry, if uh, Justin Bieber makes a new song, I wouldn't say that I have never heard in my life a type of a chord progression, let's say a chord progression, all right, which we also have here, chords, a chord progression, top, mid, bass, the bergamot accord mixed with some tonka bean, mixed with some lavender that has been smelled 50,000 times in fragrances already, but still it's not a clone, just like some musicians don't clone each other, but you only learn through what is existing on the market. You always get better with looking what's on the market. So Nike I, I for can 50 see where people dollars, bring it up what? though, because you are, you are a fan, I know, of Ultramol. And uh, I don't know about Armani Code or Mont Blanc Legend Invictus, but to me, I love, I like all those fragrances. They're great fragrances. And, uh, you know, the, the good thing I do hear about Date for Men, this has silage. This thing yeah, will man. last a solid uh, eight, eight to 10 hours. Now you say 30%. Now that brings yeah. up, so 30%, uh, what, what about 30% oud? Some people were saying that uh, you stated there was a lot of oud in this fragrance and a lot of people aren't picking it up. Yeah, right? it has oud in it, definitely. And funnily yesterday, let me actually do the test right now. It's a bit weird, but let's try it right now. Okay, yesterday, yeah. Oh man, that's sick, man. If you actually get a taste of this, you, <laughs> you get much more oud. It's funny, Antonia, no. But yesterday by accident, I sprayed a bit in my mouth <laughs> and you get a strong no, dose of oud. We know this oud. isn't an accident, Jeremy. We know that you like to, you like to suck <laughs> No, no, <laughs> yesterday it was an accident. It, it explains but, a lot but, when, you're, when you're drinking this stuff. I, I, <laughs> I get it, I get it. <laughs> so this has real oud from Laos. In fact, because we're filling it in Germany, which is the European Union, it was a tough process on importing that oud from Laos. It's a very expensive kilogram price and actually, you know, you pay in kilogram price if you order these oil bulks and the, the juice of date is very expensive. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this juice is very expensive in general. We got cardamom from Guatemala, we got oud from Laos. And just because we are, sometimes you got garlic in a, in, a, in a menu and you hate garlic, but it, it just tastes good, the meal. Here, we have oud in it. Some people hate oud, but I can still tell you there's oud in it and you still like it. So I wanted to have a fragrance that I didn't want, but it came out by coincidence that it has real oud. So I like it and it has real oud. Of course, it is not only oud, but it is in there. And it's, you, can, you can put this juice in a gas chromatograph and see the spike that we have real oud in it. Do you feel that the fragrance, that you, that you should have been more daring with the fragrance? A lot of people are saying, and this is something I feel, like when you talk about the brand, office, date, mm -hmm. you want something that the guy can make an easy choice. And a lot of yeah. people feel that this should have been a more daring fragrance. Like, it smells like other fragrances. I wish he would have done, so, he would have put out a fragrance like nothing I'd ever smelt before. I could do it, but I have the opinion, let's go back to the hedgehog principle. What you see is what you get. To me, 
This is the best date fragrance for a man. This is not the most polarizing date fragrance for a man. So this question could be already solved with that statement. And I can do a niche extreme line where I throw in $50,000 per kilogram Cambodian wool in it. So you're happy, okay guys? This, this juice took me exactly two hours and 10 seconds to create because I just briefed the performance. Man, throw in 80% oud, real oud, okay, no fake oud, throw in 80% oud, throw in some incense and throw in some bergamot and here we go. It's not difficult to, to use curse words, it's not difficult to be whatever type of stuff, but to make something very likable, high quality, with a touch of a powerful attitude, that's at least how I describe the fragrances so far. They, are, they have a very likable DNA, they are very long lasting and they have a touch of an extreme. The office has a bit of an overload of spices in it, which is rather over unusual for a fresh and clean fragrance. The date fragrance has a bit of an overload for, of, of the oud and spices again, which is sometimes just a sweet bubblegum note in fragrances and here again. But even if it wouldn't have it, I would still go back to my principle, like the hedgehog principle, read it in a book from good to great companies. Man, what you see is what you get. If I write date for man on it, this is the best date fragrance in my eyes. This is my brand. You're buying my brand or not. So let me ask about ingredients. And you're talking a lot about ingredients. Let's talk about the top notes. What are the four top notes? The four top notes are bergamot, lemon, Brazilian mandarin, and juniper berry. And do you know that juniper berry is not a fruit? Yeah, I heard about that, yes, but, I'm, <laughs> I'm, but to me, I'm a German and I hear berry and to me, it's a fruit. There are companies that say we got the real oud in it and they are straight there, up there are just There are just people on the web that want you to know, apparently it is a, uh, what is it? It's a, cone, it's a conifer? Yeah, uh, fine just... for you. <laughs> to me, a berry is a fruit. <laughs> so if you're talking, but I want to make it simple. So also Ray Dalio says, the, one of the best investors on the planet, he says, you have to be kind of right. I'm not, you know, this is not a life and death thing right now. And I'm not, you know. So when, so a lot of people, you know, let's, let's they're very critical bit, of the small even, things. They're critical yeah, because of your descriptions that you're talking about like a sexy, you know, you're describing, you know, you're throwing in random sex, you know, the word sexy all over the place. Yeah, that it is sexy. They, would, they want to see something, you know, that's just more solid descriptive. Uh, no yeah, what about they, the other people that enjoy this misspelled. one? If I make something that there's nowadays haters like, what about the other people that dislike that fragrance then? What about that? What about these people then? <laughs> Question back to the haters. Yeah. They say, well, the other people don't matter. My opinion matters. I want it to be more oud. Or what? What's the right answer, Mr. Hater? I would like to know, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, man. Well, Jeremy, tell me a little bit more about, um, you know, we talked about the top notes. Let's get into yep. the heart notes and let's get into the base notes. So there, there's a lot of notes. There's a lot of notes. I'm, I'm making a story myself how I'm describing this fragrance. To me, it has an opening of four fruits on the top mixed with four masculine notes in the base. These collide with each other and have a, a, a super sexy, powerful clash of contrasts. Fruity, fruity flirtiness, like on a date, you say, wow, well, what's up, and flirty and fun, and then it becomes sexual and intimate, and that's the idea, how I built myself this story. My channel also had a success because I was building stories and not doing it like other reviewers did. Yeah. So this is the fragrance bottle, here we go. Okay, as you can see, it says date for men on the front. Okay, now we turn it around. It says, made in Germany. Everybody is gone by now. Yeah. Now, and also they said it opens up with top note. Let's start with the top note. Bergamot, fruit, tuck, base note. We have blah, blah. This almost doesn't matter. Give me, give a cook five things, eggs, spices, this and this. You think this will always smell the same or what? Or does the different dosage matter? Does the perfumer matter? <laughs> this, is, this is like saying, oh man, this meal has salmon, this meal has olive oil, 
this meal has that. You know, I'm not too serious with only notes, but I do understand the notes. So my general description of date for men, you got a fruity opening, four fruits, and four masculine notes on the base. We got much more, but we got the cardamom from Guatemala. We got the patchouli, which is also found in Office for Men. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are nicely blended in together. So this is a bit by coincidence happening, but also in the female fragrance, we get a strong jasmine zambak note. And so they perfectly harmonize with each other. By accident, we came on the process. Man, you can blend them together because they have a core base note, like here, the patchouli. They are the jasmine. Cool. And we got, so we got the patchouli, we got the cardamom, we got the oud from Laos, and we got the vetiver from Haiti. So tell me a little bit more about the future. Are, you, are there any other collaborations coming out with uh, Roberto Marias? Yeah, man. Again, this, I thought in the process of making this, I can't promise it, but my dream scenario would be the following. My dream scenario would be the following. I have Alberto Morias making all men's fragrances because to me, Alberto Morias has, has made the best men's fragrance in the history. I would love to have Honorine Blanc to, have to make all the female fragrances because she has made the best female fragrance in history for me, <laughs> for me <laughs> again. And I would like to have independent other, like not these two guys, perfumers to make the unisex fragrances. So we also have unisex fragrances. I think, and this is a bit of a spoiler and who knows how it will be in one and a half years, so I can't sign it. But I think we will always have three men, three women, three unisex, and one limited edition per month, per year. And that will be it with the brand. And if in two years we say, Oh man, the Office for Man DNA from 2019 or 18 is a bit outdated now. Let's reformulate it. I will actually reformulate the fragrance because I think you have to smell modern then. Well, you know, what would, be, what would really set you apart from all the other houses is if you actually state that you're going to reformulate. Yeah, and it will, it will be so funny. Some people would say this is a weakness, but I would say actually it's gorgeous because people will hunt for the old Office for Man bottles. Man, I, yeah. I got still the first Office for Man version. Now the second one, I don't like so much. Well, <laughs> turn your strength, weaknesses to your strengths. And I think about the end consumer. I learned that from Jeff Bezos reading about him, looking him speech. He cares about the end consumer. If in my end consumer wants to smell great in the office in 2024, and I feel this smells outdated, man. This smell, we got to reformulate it to make you smell fantastic. I will do it. All right. Well, Jeremy, you answered my questions. I felt that uh, some of those were a little bit, uh, <laughs> low, they, weren't, they weren't the easiest ones. They weren't softballs. Yeah, I love it. And, uh, but man, we're all cool guys. We're all, yeah, yeah. Every, every human want peace, man. Yeah. And I get it, man. I also make mistakes. I've been through a lot of stuff, but all good, man. Sounds good. And man. Antonio, thank you. Yeah, Looking thank you. Looking forward to the Menfluential. Yeah. Antonio is a great guy, guys, if you can leave that in. I know it sounds a bit like ego if you let that in, but Antonio is a great guy, man. He's a cool guy. And he, I think you reached out to me when I had about 30, 40, 50,000 subscribers or something. Something is like that. Is it possible? Yeah. Man, I was a baby YouTuber, so thank you, Antonio. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I just enjoy seeing people grow up in the space. And I appreciate, I like your business approach to it, which I think is one of the reasons that you just don't always see eye to eye with a lot of the people that this is an art and they don't understand the business, or maybe they haven't been successful yet in business, probably because of their, some of their preconceived, as bad as it sounds, we just have preconceived beliefs about the way things yeah. need to be done or the, the way that you need to grow. And I think you're just approaching it a different way. But I know yeah. that when people have the chance to meet you in person and sit sure. down and actually have a conversation, that you're, you, you're, you're, it, you come off very different. Because I feel like as a YouTuber myself, it's something that, I know sometimes I am putting out a bit more energy than normally I do in the video. And this can come off as salesy. Yeah. It can come off as overbearing. But you but, need to sell also often. Yeah. You need to do it. You need to kill the animal. You need to 
push, you need to close, and that's fine, and you don't always make friends with that. Yeah, people want to leave, uh, people will leave a video. I mean, we've got the data. If, if I just, yeah. if I talk too monotone, if I am yeah. quiet for too long, if I go into too much, yeah. too much detail, which I, you know, I, then they kind of buzz out. So I try to break this up and make it the entertainment mixed with also the education and always looking out. And one thing I've always respected about you, Jeremy, is you didn't, mm -hmm. I know that you've had tons of, tons of brands that have always wanted you to promote their stuff. And you're like, not going to do it, not going to do it, not going to do it. I'm going after my, I'm going after my stuff, you know. To, so. Yeah, I have lost friends that wanted me to push their brand. Man, I have lost friends that wanted me to push one brand. And actually, one brand got me so far that I didn't, actually, man, this is, this is a bit of illegal stuff. But I did one mistake once where I had a paid, comp paid stuff with a brand, which I really hated, man, until this day, which I never make this mistake again, where I spoke a bit better about a brand, about a fragrance that I actually would do in real life. So I made this mistake as well, but I think only once in my lifetime ever, and I will never make this mistake again. And on the other hand, man, I have lost friends because they wanted me to push their brand. They really, and they said, what, you can, can't even place that or something? And I said, well, we, we, we're doing something for the good cause also. I said, yeah, but it smells like the 24 gold by Sense Store. It's an exact clone, man. And I said it more kind, I was a bit soft back in the days. But man, honesty wins. And I've also been an ass, in a, let's say in a comfortable way, I'm being a bit too pushy or doing this. I tried a lot of stuff, but I had a lot of journey and ultimately you're also doing it for yourself and if your soul is in peace, man, you're having a good vibe, man. And if you don't have to lie, that's the best thing ever. And you really don't have to lie, actually. It's a gorgeous thing in life. So Yeah, you don't even have that. to you don't have to have a good memory if you don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> that's what my brother also says. My memory is bad, I, that's why I don't lie or something. Yep. Hey, I'm gonna wrap things up, Jeremy. Thank you. Really appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you, Antonio. Okay. Love it. Have a great day, everybody. Antonio community. Bye, everybody. See you. Take care. All right. Bye, guys. Yeah.